What's going on, guys? I know I promised you more interviews and podcasts, and I finally had the chance to meet up with Brad. We do about a 45-minute conversation, just catching up, discussing a little bit of pandemic, a little bit of guitar building. Let's get right into it. I promised you guys Derek and Brad conversation for over a year. We haven't done it, but joining me is Mr. Brad. We're here to talk. You haven't promised me any conversations, man. (laughs) I promised everyone else, and then you know we've talked about doing these, and <laughs> finally I've got finally done a, a global pandemic has caused us to to connect a little bit. This is uh, YouTube's favorite two guitar builders, right? Of course, <laughs> for the twenty people that share our channel and will watch it immediately, right? Well, this is what it took for people to want to actually, or for us to actually want to talk to each other, I assume, is now we can't go outside and speak to anybody else. Uh, For for us, I got three kids and and my wife, and we've been stuck in the house. So it's, uh, my job is essential. So having to come into the office every once in a while has been good. Um, It's been a good break. I actually haven't been able to build as much as I wanted to. I've got like five or six different projects I've been working on. I just haven't been able to get to them. So that's that's been hard because you're supposed yeah. to have more free time, and I actually don't. So <laughs> I just haven't gotten there. Same boat. I uh, I thought when this thing came down and they said, you're going to have to work from home. I'm like, oh, well, that saves me an hour a day in the commute. I'm going to have so much time for projects. Yeah. Not so much. No. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I always have a lot of project going and, you know, to get the videos out the door, you've got to have at least four or five things going because you got oh, yeah. glue time, assembly time, routing setup and all that. So like, there's never just one project. There's at least four or five. And so Absolutely. As, I'm, as I'm letting things dry, I just never get there, you know? And then, so now I have to, it takes me 20 minutes to get something set up. I didn't get to it. So another day passes. So my, my yeah. videos have dried up. I've done some commentary videos, which some te- sometimes people like, but everyone wants to know about the 53 gold top I'm working on. And I'm like, I'm working on it, but that five minutes a day doesn't allow me to actually do the setup that I need to. Yeah, I have uh, the, the new shipping issues that we're all encountering now have made things interesting. I'm working on that metal top guitar. Yeah. And foolish as I am, I looked at the wiring harness and thought, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm sure it'll work out. And then I tried to put in a couple of humbuckers that are two conductor. <laughs> and I feel like this thing's designed to handle like eight conductor. I don't know what's going on. There's more colors than I can name. Uh, so now I've been waiting for like three weeks to get in the new ones that I need to actually finish this build. And oh, I think man. there are three people on YouTube who are going to disown me. <laughs> I'm surprised. So like, it, it was interesting as we started off, my view time and everything sort of went through the roof and the revenue kind of didn't follow like some of the ad rates have dropped, but I did get more engagement. I did get people watching. And now, you know, two months in, it's like, everyone's like, yeah, we're just done. We're done to trying to be productive <laughs> or get in. That <laughs> Everyone just wants to hit the patio now, even up here in Canada, it's warm these days. Yeah. Yeah. We're in, we're in Chicago and we're finally getting to like a real spring summers around the corner, but, you know, I couldn't imagine doing this in the winter. I think we, we would all be dead just because we'd all kill each other being stuck in, you know, all the snow and everything. So we've been lucky that way. Really wouldn't leave the house. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how, how have you been handling like the builds and, you know, you've got multiple projects going, like what, what else you got coming? Like what, where do you, what are you thinking? Well, uh, not, not a whole heck of a lot has changed for me, honestly, before I was, uh, get into the shop on the weekends, try and do a little bit at home during the week kind of guy, just cause you know, I've got a different job Yeah. and nice. Yeah. Same deal. I've got uh, a bunch of, bunch of kits coming up to build of course. And I'm going to do some, some scratch work, finally some scratch necks and stuff. And I'm in the process of finalizing some product development on, have you ever seen my goofy metal art stuff that I yeah. do? Yep. 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 Yeah. We're doing some pick guards and, and, you know, some custom options there. It's going to be, I won't waste your time explaining it all, but it's going to be uh, interesting. I'm looking forward to yeah, it. I, that, the last metal you car, guitar you've been working on, I, I loved, I know you didn't like changing the color, but I love seeing the same guitar in different colors. Like I, I've done that a couple times. Uh, not everyone 
really understands how much time and effort it takes to like get something stripped back down. But I love seeing yeah. multiple versions of the same thing in different colors because one color may stand out better than the other. And like the green really came out nice. I, I think that's really sweet. Thanks. People don't seem to realize that uh, painting the same project three, four times, that's how we get to, to the point where we can do it right the first time, sometimes. <laughs> uh, I, it's funny. I, I haven't had as many uh, beginner questions as just guys in it. You know, so I've yeah. had more guys who are like mid builders getting involved more so than like just starting out. And I thought I'd get more people just starting out than. Yeah. And, and I was surprised because I've tried a couple like beginning series and those have never really gotten traction. But as soon as I do something that's like sort of mid-level grade, it goes like wildfire. I was like, I didn't expect that at all. You know, and then my. Nice. My guys are complaining. You know, I do all the stain tops. I I didn't do them for a couple months. Everyone complains. I post a bunch of them, and then I get no views. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My uh, my most popular stuff is more of the what direction do I paint the spray or point the spray can type <laughs> thing, which is fun. You know, the information's got to get out there. Yeah. Are you uh, are you still building when you can? I I have a couple builds I've got. Like I. I, fi I did take a break. Uh, I bought a bunch of redwood tops from Kimball, and I did nice. an inlay with my CNC. So I've been playing with the CNC more. I've tuned it up a little bit better. Uh, I have like these sort of high-end designed guitars uh, that I want to do more of. I just don't. I don't have the time, you know. Like yeah. I, and I keep telling people like this is like a ten-year thing for me. In ten years, kids will be out of college. I could probably pull back and get into it so right now for me it's like experiment experiment see what kind of lands with people and then you know in 10 years let's let's roll with it so i've got one one guitar that you know that's mine the whiskey barrel guitar is like my thing and then those are awesome thank you uh i'm trying to figure out um what else i can do outside of that and i think i've got another maybe two projects in my head that could be like another line extension, but I just don't have, I get like half hour a day, you know? So you're filming, you got the kids and the wife, like how much, you know, okay, kids go to bed, give me a half hour or, you know, on the weekends I can get three or four hours so I can get a lot of done, a lot of stuff done, but it's like these spurts. Well, as much as I hate to compliment a guy who literally did a paint dump on a guitar, nobody really, nobody quite does the same kind of stain work you do. So if you're buying stuff from Kimball, I'm sure that's going to be, wow, your usual level of interesting. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I, w with that project that we went back and forth with, like I, as much as we joke, I, I was really impressed with your level of artistic. Like I don't have that. Like that's not me. Like I, I'm doing good at the stains but like you actually like put art together and as much as the dump was like funny like i tried like something outside of mine i'm like either this will be like an awesome work or it'll be a spectacular failure and then when people look at it they're like it's awesome it sucks i'm like well it was exactly what i wanted <laughs> you know i've been trying to figure out for ages how to do and i think you did some swirling work at one point if i remember correctly yeah. because yeah. i was looking at your channel trying to learn how to do it uh and i never could get it right and you figured out this this paint dump technique that looks very similar it is and whew, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to learn it one of these days yeah but i gotta i gotta wait for uh for everybody to forget about the home depot guitar <laughs> kit challenge before i go and try and steal your technique or i'll <laughs> never hear the end of it <laughs> someone, will, someone will lay on to you for it the uh i mean we all watch mr dean swirl a gazillion. Oh yeah. And there's nothing on there. There's no, you know, there's no recipe. No. And Can't even tell what is what he's doing with his water. You like, know, <laughs> like is it borax? Is it not? Is it cold? Is it hot? You know, yeah. and it's like they're perfect. And I tried. I mean, I tested and I tested. I must have spent five, six hundred dollars. Did not make it up in video ad revenue or sold. And I'm like, <laughs> I've given up again. Like I bought more yeah. enamel paints. And I'm like, God, you know, like. I can't do it. And that's the one thing I, I wanted to perfect. And the the dump is probably the closest thing I can find to get something that at least is consistent. Because a lot of times when you're dumping the paints in, they'll start to separate. And then you get this like muddy look. And it, 
it's terrible. Yeah. And I don't think he has a YouTube channel, but the guy from uh, A Swirl the Part, it's called. I love the name too. I mean, might just be me, but <laughs> he does he does awesome work. And he did one recently. He sent it to me on Instagram. It's got a color shift. So it's a very vibrant, like teal and black metallic swirl from the top. And then as you move down, the teal fades into a dark navy-ish effect until you can barely see it. It's insane. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the one thing that, that people don't realize doing guitars is like you have the woodworking which is a set of skills and then you move into finishing and finishing is its own set of skills um every time i spray paint now i'm like would brad approve of this spray method because it's like <laughs> i'm like no it's not his method but like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you've never followed my method <laughs> And for me, the uh, the most nerve wracking part of the guitar build is tuning the thing because it doesn't matter how many times I do it, somebody's all, always going to say, "Why don't you tune it before you demo it?" <laughs> I have a tuner. What? what? I, I get that every once in a while too. I, I did that. Tiny uh, ears. I can't hear what's going on. Yeah, my um, I did what was the uh, review of the uh, Thomas Harmon, or the, the Toman Harmon, whatever, right. Harley yeah. Benton, and the Chipson. And they're like, it's out of tune. I'm like, well, they're out of tune within five minutes of playing, but like they're literally tuned up as I start playing and they're sort yeah. of intonated. But like there's always someone that, that hears better than, than I do. But, you know. Those yeah. refurb jobs you do are insane. Yeah, the, the gold top, I'm getting yeah. close on that one. That one, I, I actually, uh, I'm working on the CNC inlay. So the inlay's cracked on the headstock. I sawed it off and now I'm, trying to reproduce it in a new inlay and I'm going to give it to him as a gift. And, and I'm like, this is like, it's here. And now I'm like, Oh, and people are like, why isn't the video ready? I'm like, I'm not a hundred percent sure how I'm going to do this yet. <laughs> and, and at uh. times I'm like, I'll just re-glue it back on. And I'm like, no, cause then I need that. I need that piece of wood solid as the strength. So like, and yeah, I thought about cutting the inlay out and repatching it, but I know over time you'll see the lines from it. And I was like, no, I just got to put a whole new inlay. And this kind of work, it's, it's as much about figuring out how to do something as it is just doing it half the time. Like some of the scratch builds, I, I, I don't know, I don't really do them, but some of the scratch builds, you, you follow the process, you know, it is probably after you've done a few fairly well laid out, but when you're going in trying to refurb something or fix up a kit that's got problems or whatever, like you need a plan. <laughs> yeah. I didn't plan real, real well with like the Paul Reed Smith one that I did. And that was just a disaster. Like, Is that where you redid the entire fretboard? I, I, uh, I didn't redo the fretboard, but I had to, um, I had to get that epoxy sealer out to restain the top. Oh, right. <laughs> So what, what is that stuff? You know more about finishes than me. What is that like epoxy sealer? Uh, my guess is it's probably like a Simtex style polyester sealer. Yeah. might be an epoxy, but that polyester crap, um, I don't even spray it. And that's like I spray pretty much everything. <laughs> but I don't spray that stuff because you put it in the gun and it is like resin within a few minutes. So. Uh -oh. If you're not running a ton of like it'll harden right in the right in the gallon. So if you're not running a ton of it, uh, if you're not somebody who's spraying pretty much every day, then it's a great product. If you're the Fender factory or or a shop that does exclusively that kind of work, dries insanely fast. You'd probably love it for those uh, fabric tops too, because you can throw some down on uh, the yeah. on the wood, sand flat, do your fabric, and then seal it in like nobody's business. But uh, yeah, it's the worst when it comes to sanding trying to get it out of there oh it was terrible i mean i i remember yeah. i did like a preview video i had my dust mask on and my jacket i'm all covered in shit and i was like this is the dumbest thing i have done in a long time <laughs> it's like, it's the worst I, day of my life yeah. and people are like you should have known i'm like well i did i just didn't think it'd be that bad you know <laughs> so I, I i tell guys like oh can you refinish my prs i was like hell no no i won't even touch it like I won't even go near it now. Won't be staying in it, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'd be nice if they just do a, you know, a transparent tint coat over top. Maybe make things a little easier because they do yeah. a wipe dye, I think, for the most part, and then, yep. ugh, then they basically, you know, seal it in plastic that nobody can get through. It's like a force field. 
but yeah, and the, the worst, that was the worst thing is I was like, oh, I think I can repair some of the chip roads. You know, the guy who had had it before beat the hell out of it. And I was like, oh, it'll be easy to repair. And no, it, it just wasn't, you know. And, so much different than lacquer. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I, I was like, I'll take on any Gibson project now. I'll, all yeah. of them. Because, you know, you can essentially just wipe them down with thinner acetone and it's coming off. Uh, yeah. But, it, you know, even I refinished at uh, one of the better videos I did recently was I took a, a, a polyester finish uh, uh, telly, like a blonde telly, and I aged it. And I probably overaged it, but it had that same finish. But at least I got it to look like, you know, because you could drag that thing behind your car for five minutes and it's really not going to do that much. So, like, no. I was wailing on it for a while to get it at least somewhat looking like a it's been at least played. Oh, it's brutal doing that with Polly because they don't look played. No, it doesn't matter how still, long. And it's still like, I got it to look better, but it yeah. doesn't look that good. And if you're like, if you're not very good at it, like you, you've got some practice at this stuff, but if you're, you get like the, the rookie mode version of trying to relic a poly finish. And it's, it's like, they took some sandpaper to one piece, <laughs> realized they couldn't get through it down to the woods. So that's just scratched. And then they tried to like nick off a piece, but because it's hard plastic, it's just like a chunk that's missing. Chunk, yeah. <laughs> you get like 180 grit, and then you've got like yeah. 600 grit. You're like that doesn't look. What did you do? Like you snap <laughs> halfway through. What happened here? Yeah. And they never take off the pick guard either. So <laughs> as soon as you go to remove that, it's just like a Brightener. pristine section underneath. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's crazy. What? Uh... What other sort of things do you want to get into outside, of, like with these custom builds, you're going to do your own design? Or are you going to sort of just play on what's out there? Or what are you thinking? Yeah. Um, uh, well, the, the guards that I'm doing will be in a variety of unique designs. So that's kind of project one for me is, is get that going. And to get just slightly further into it, uh, it's the plan isn't just like standard replacements or even, uh, sorry, my camera only films for 10 minutes at a time, so it shuts itself off. Uh, so, yeah, the plan isn't just standard replacements in an interesting finish necessarily. It'll be in different shapes, but also some completely, like, not practical stuff that you can bolt onto various positions to almost, like, like a kit. So, like, what I'm looking for here is almost a bolt-on aesthetic that you can do for, you know, a cyberpunk-type thing with uh, a metal look yeah. or steampunk or whatever. Um, so that's kind of part one. Then I've got some stock bodies uh, that aren't, they're not kits. They're just bodies that I'm going to play with, but they're not super standard. So I'm going to be making my own necks for those. And then, you know, eventually I can, I can be a grown up like you and build my own guitars, hopefully, but we'll see for now. I'll, I'll keep doing the, the Lego version. How how is so you I don't know if everyone like I know you've done some shop tours but you have sort of like two shops you've got your shop in the house then you've got this awesome industrial shop is that yeah. explain that a little bit more okay so yeah the the shop in the house is literally the corner of my garage yeah. um, where I hang up my tools and there are a few kicking around in other parts of the house but you know I can only commandeer so much of the uh, the place without getting a divorce and then I won't be able to afford or the house so <laughs> gotta keep going uh, because that at that way like i've just taken over everything yeah like well i've got this room too right like you don't see <laughs> uh and then the shop i started working at that place when i was like 14 ish okay. doing you know it, it's an interesting spot they do a lot of different stuff so i started out you know making boxes and packing stuff and then uh move my way into some machinist work into some custom manufacturing. And now that I'm in a completely different career, I still go in on the weekends and, and do some of their, their custom work and um, kind of on the flip side, they let me use the place. So they got a lot of cool stuff there. I've been, uh, yeah, <laughs> been in and out of that, that shop for a long time. Yeah. I was, I was like, I was, when I started, I was 22 and I ruined my rental apartment's uh, carpet because nice. I spilled some stain, you know, or I spilled what I spilled, some poly finish on a, a V I was refinishing. And then there was a guy down the street who had a shop that I, you know, became his shop rat. 
and then in exchange for being a shop rat, I would work nights for him every once in a while. And then, nice. you know, we got into the first house, I think I was 25, 26, and just started like accumulation mode. Plus my grandfather had passed and I took some yeah. of his stuff. So like, it's just like this slow, slow, slow accumulation. And then as I was doing more builds, I started, I don't know, it's like the internet was weird in the early day because I connected with a couple of dealers in Cleveland. I started making bodies for them. And as I kept making bodies, I just took that money and re-put the money in and re-put the money in and re-put the money in. And yeah. it, it takes a while. Like I, my brother's got a shop in the city in Chicago that he was renting. He moved out of the city and he's like, now I got to buy tools. I'm like, well, that's what I told you, man. Like it takes time and money to get there. Yeah. So it's, it's a like, slow, slow, slow process. It is. It is. And you got to keep your wife or spouse or whatever happy along the way. Yeah. And I did not do a good job of doing that. That's my big failure. <laughs> I'm finally at a spot where I can start to make fun of my dad because I have more and better tools than he does. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, I think that's that the, the slow build has helped me get to a spot where like people walk into the because I have two shops. So I got the garage shop, which is all the big heavy tools, and then I've yeah. got the basement shop where I do the assembly. And I took about an eighth of the garage when we or the basement when we moved in, and then the guitar started selling, and then I took yeah. the, the other eighth. The problem is the eighth is as you walk down the stairs and you're like, you know, assembly bench and camping <laughs> bench. Yeah. And then I, you know, I still need a spot that's essentially a studio to do the filming. And yeah. so, you know, like I really need like a full unfinished basement. And I, I was lucky when we found this house, when we moved back, it had, I, I could at least customize it. Uh, yeah. But it's that, that space versus what you can or can't do. Like I promised my wife we could fit the car in the garage this winter. And I bought 200 whiskey barrels and I was like, ah. She pulled it in, I think, once. That's, but, yeah, that makes things a little tougher. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not. <laughs> so at least we're, this next winter for sure, because I'll have worked through a bunch of barrels and I've realized I'm not going to use all of them. So like some of the junk stuff I've been scrapping or burning or, you know, giving away. So, but it's amazing. Uh, make, it, make a few custom tops for people and just ship them out and glue it on your own guitar. Yeah. It's amazing though. Like you definitely need some space. It's yeah. time and learning and effort. Like it's, I have very few guys hit it right off the bat. You know, like even now I'm trying to get my wife's YouTube channel going, and I tell her like I was lucky to have a channel going ten years ago. And what's your wife's YouTube channel? She she does yoga and exercise stuff. You know, like nice. That's her full time job. Um, but she's trying to get it started now, and it just doesn't doesn't do it so like i know I, go ahead tougher market by the day youtube like you know every, there are so many channels out there just it gets more and more difficult to find your niche and get to get people actually watching your stuff but if you're doing it for fun if you like what you do it's not so bad yeah for this for me like this is still i have it's like my jobby i tell people i just don't do as much of the hobby as i wanted to anymore but like I like yeah. experimenting and playing, but sell that guitar and make money, or just, you know screw around on another top. I'm like, well, let's go make some money. You know, like, hey, we're going on vacation yeah. two months. Like, it'd be great just to go out every to dinner every night and not, you know, it, pay for it's it. an expensive hobby too. Like, getting it to pay for itself sometimes is a little bit of a you got to do something, right? <laughs> yeah, it, there's definitely a hump you got to get over. It's I just yeah. haven't gotten there yet. We'll you're over you're over fifty thousand now I'm for subscribers. 000. Yeah, I, I, I want to get to a hundred. So I've got five hundred like five fifty videos and I've got about fifty four thousand subscribers, I think. And I think for me nice. if I can get to like a thousand videos, a hundred thousand subscribers, like I think I'll be in a good spot in ten years at that point. Because then I think everyone will have known me. I'll have a couple like signature builds or signature restores. Yeah. And then at that point, you know, you're going to type in how to restore a guitar. Most likely, it'll be one of mine. I mean, I know there's other people that do better work, but it's like they're not putting. I don't know about that. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, there's not the same level of detail. Like, I grew Did you watch this old house? 
Do you guys have that equivalent in Canada, like Norm? I uh, I believe I've seen that. But it, it, to be fair, most of our TV up here comes from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but like I watched that with my dad on Saturday night, like before my parents would go out. And my dad had always commented like, yeah, it's real easy for him because he's got like 50 shops and everything's all set up. And I'm like, yeah, but he also was like, it's entertaining and it's fun. Like that's kind of where I yeah. want to get this channel to be is like, you know, you come in once a week, you can watch an episode of me doing something interesting. Um, this gold top rebuild will probably get me over another hump. Uh, I've got another weird build coming that, you know, you, you, it's like, you know, you have the same problem. You want to do something fresh that's different. That's just not like another refinish or another rebuild. So like I, I try to vary yeah. it up. And I, I think it's been working pretty well. I, I do like watching your old spray videos because like, some of the techniques, like your ghost flames video, like I still watch that, oh and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I still can't do that. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a weird one. I was like, you know, this this is crazy enough; it just might work, and I'm not sure that it did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny, like when you look at the, your most popular videos, and like, did you think they those would be it? You know, like as you look back now. No, and a couple of them. So a couple of them, I was like, well, this will be useful the ghost flames one was kind of out of nowhere but a couple of the other ones i look back and go i've done updates on that this is just a bad video like it's <laughs> poor this is a poorly made video that people are watching i don't know why uh like the information's fine but the video is crap yeah. so looking yeah. back at some of my old videos is borderline embarrassing but oh well what can you do yeah i, I think the biggest thing is I've got a lot of older videos that I need now to refresh, but like, do you take, yeah. do you take that down? If it's got the views, you're in the YouTube algorithm. Like, I'm like, ah, uh, what do I do? You know, like I got a black burst yeah. video and I changed the title, how not to do a black burst. Cause it doesn't fade. Right. And it doesn't look right. Yeah. There's a couple hundred thousand views on it. I'm like, ah, uh, if I delete this, do, where, do I, <laughs> where do I land? Well, and it's people are still, uh, Sorry, people are still more likely to find that, right? So yeah. the, what I've started doing on the occasion that I do a refresh video, just to try and to try and direct people to the information, because that's the whole point of my channel. Like, let's let's be honest, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be a full time guitar builder or anything like that. But I'm trying to teach people stuff. So the the intent or the way that I go about it, trying to direct people to the information, is I just make the new video put the information there and put a, a card and a link in the description, trying to direct people to a better version, to the updated content. Yeah, yeah. And you used to be able to do an annotation where you could literally write, this video sucks, go to the other one. Yeah. You can't do that anymore, but still, you can you can throw an update their way and, and hopefully it starts to move people toward, you know, because things change, products change, our techniques change. We're, we do this so much that yeah. we just find better ways of doing stuff eventually. I, I have found out that doing the pinned comment is the better way of having any sort of yeah. like interaction than writing the description out. Like a pinned comment for me, especially like I, I want people to buy the dies through Angelus and I want that kickback. So like yeah. having it in the description doesn't do anything. Saying it on the video doesn't do anything. But putting that pinned comment, it's like, oh my God, this is the first thing people read versus nice. anything else. So I, I figured some of this stuff out, which is good. Well, that's a new tip for me. So yeah. I guess I know what I'm doing later. Pin your comments. <laughs> You're like, oh, we finally made it. I spend, uh, an, well, not a lot of time, but I think probably on four or five occasions I've had to go in and pin someone else's comment because they've just corrected me. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Uh, I got, I got a, <laughs> someone on a coil tap versus a coil split. And, you know, they were a, an electrical engineer. And, like, it's a, it's a tap. It's not a split. And I'm like. You know, I think there's so much misinformation. I'm not going to take it to like that extra, <laughs> but like then like semantic, like, but all right. Maybe 50 <laughs> comments on the one thing. And I was like, oh my God, like, you know, I'm not, my problem is I, I misspeak a lot. Like right. my, my, I don't want to say, uh, not dyslexic, but um, I at times use the wrong word or the wrong inflection and yeah. I don't re-edit. I keep it sort of natural. I think that's sort of the appeal. But man, when someone is like, 
the language please you know and they're like well you're you know you're putting it out there i'm like yeah but i'm not an english major i mean like i'm just yeah. gonna, I'm like a dude. I'm an analytics <laughs> dude building guitars because I need like an outlet. Like, give me a break, you know. Like, neither of those are <laughs> strong suit. Not making myself out to be a linguistics expert here. Like, take it easy. <laughs> um, you got any new pieces of gear or anything that's coming? What? What? Uh, your amp setup is actually pretty nice. I'm envying you a little bit. I've got. Uh, I did. I don't know if you, you saw. I, I did the Walter Becker act auction from Steely Dan. Right, yeah. And I, I picked up this uh, Vox AC30 hand-wired. I got a great deal on it. And I thought it was going to be like the centerpiece of my, my, like my rig. And I'm like, yeah. eh, I don't know. It's, you know. I can't get it at the right volume to like get it to sound good. And my wife hates my playing anyway. And the kids yell at me. So like, I keep going back and forth with different pieces of gear. The, the funny thing is I bought this orange <laughs> amp at, at that same auction. Right. And, I use it all the time because I can dial it in at a low volume, and I'm like, this thing's great. So it's so like, I, I, I'm envious of your your rack back there for sure. <laughs> well, this thing's I'm, I'm supposed to one of these days fix that tube amp in the corner there. Oh yeah. Um, but I I know about as much about electronics as I do about space travel, so I try and keep it simple. This guy's actually not bad because the head has a little practice speaker in it. Yeah. So you can do like a little, the practice speaker or the five ohm setting. So uh, that tends to keep me from getting stuff thrown at me while I'm, yeah. while I'm occasionally trying to play guitar. But as you probably know, if you've ever seen me play, I don't do it very often. Uh, no, it's funny. Like, cause every once in a while I'll get, like, I'll do a live video and a guy will like play such and such. I'm like, that's not me, man. Like, I mean, yeah, what am I to do? Yeah, like I'm not Justin. I there's a reason why I found other guys to play my stuff because like I suck. Yeah. And then <laughs> like you know most of us are into guitars or whatever, but they don't actually read like I read all Leo Fender's books and stuff. Like he didn't play at all, you know. And it's like yeah. So you know I it, it's funny as as the more I've dug into this business and industry, like you get like the awesome player builders. You know, and then you get like the commentary guys, and there's just such a different mix of us. And like, I'm the hack hackathon guy who, you know, got lucky having an old channel type of thing sometimes. Yeah, I uh, I guess I'd be the the painter who kind of just stumbled into guitars one day and <laughs> never found his way back out. <laughs> uh, I see you got a good whiskey collection back there, man. That's my other, that's, you know. I like that. Uh, that's that's the Scotch shelf predominantly. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and then the the bourbon is downstairs, and the rye is actually mostly in the basement now. I I drink too much, but oh well. <laughs> but you know, that's if I can have a drink and do some guitar work. Actually, do the guitar work and then have a drink. That's usually a pretty. Good there you go. I have yet the to... problem is uh, if you try and do them at the same time, I almost invariably end up with some sawdust or something in there so i could have a beer and do a little bit of work like sanding or whatever but for some reason i cannot drink the heavy stuff and do any woodworking like it's just i, I know better which is good but like yeah <laughs> it's probably for the best probably for yeah. the best so what else you got coming up today or tomorrow anything i got this gold top i, I finally found the people who sell the gold top flakes so I'll, I'll have that video so like the nice. actual uh same supplier as the other company in Nashville. I, I'll you be using that. I'll post a video on that, and then uh, I'm gonna have to look into that one. Yeah, that's interesting because they have a lot of like copper flakes, and I, I figured that might be something that you'd be interested in. The company is based in Wisconsin, and I guess they've been in business for long enough that they're the original guys. So I've got that, and then I'm finishing up a build for Kimball, and then a couple random things here and there. What the what do you got in the next couple of days here? Anything? Yeah, on the, on the, off the press here. Uh, those pickups should be coming in for the metal top. So that's coming up quick. Tomorrow should be cool. the next one in the series on that ultimate SG kit build. Yep. Um, that's almost done. Customers going to want that sooner rather than later. <laughs> uh, and then a couple, couple carved, carved top or carved guitars. I'm going to be, I've done the carving work, so one of them's getting leafing and an epoxy fill, oh, cool. and the other one just needs some accent airbrush work uh, and a custom guard. And then 
I think I'm going to, well, I mean, I've got that hollow body ES style kit build coming up too, but, and the acoustic one, Jesus. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I love the, what you did yeah. on the, the sparkle with that, 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 that's an interesting build. You know, like a lot of guys ask me where, where to buy like quality Chinese stuff or quality kits. <sighs> uh it's hard to say sometimes that guy's not quality i got the es one that i'm looking forward to is from solo so that's actually that one looks like it's going to be a good build yeah as that, opposed to a nightmare <laughs> yeah the kit we got that sg kit we did together that was a good quality build I, i've got to do more kit stuff i just just haven't you know for some reason i like making my own body like i i I get that. I yeah. Find like a little bit of like shop therapy in that. I hate the sanding, but like everything else, I love cutting the wood, routing the wood. Yeah. You know, I just got to figure out a faster way to sand. I like having a base to work off and just absolutely mangling it. And that's. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, a recent joy of mine. Like, how do I make this look nothing like the guitar kit that it's supposed to look like? Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Do like Ben Crow and just start chambering the chambers. Yeah, he's. Uh, it's interesting watching him go through his journey, and and you know he was sort of like his first video was that PRS aging that he got oh, fantastic for. Like he aged a PRS with a knife, and he just got reamed. And then, you know, he really took off. Like his personality and his style, you know, is awesome. I've talked to him a couple times. You know, it's it's interesting to to you know he's got. Uh, such an appeal, you know. I you, you watch Fletcher, right? You've seen Fletcher's videos from yeah. New Zealand. I don't know what happened. He he hasn't posted. Um, you know, he's got some great in depth stuff. Uh, yeah. My other guy is Freddie. You know Freddie Fretz. He does the Les Paul builds. He's in. Uh, I think he's outside of Toronto somewhere. He's got. Oh, it's, it's I'll a, look him up. Yeah, it's a smaller channel, but man, he he really does a nice job. So. Been watching some of uh, Highline Guitars water based stuff lately. That guy knows his way around a knows his way around a water based finish for sure. Yeah, he's been doing more CNC stuff too, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I go back and forth with what I've got. Sometimes I want to do more CNC. Sometimes I want to do more uh, traditional. And I've only gotten into the CNC only because like some of this logo work. Like I need to figure it out. Right. I, can't, I can't reproduce the logo that needs to be done without knowing that system and setup. So I finally like got that machine tuned in. But like, you know, but that's also the other thing with the guitar stuff is I like to have my hand in a bunch of different you know, play around with it. Yeah. So, gotta keep it interesting. Gotta keep it interesting. All right, man, we'll call it here. We got about Sounds good. 35 minutes. Thank you, sir, for joining me. We'll see. Uh, Thank you for setting it up. We'll see how the fans enjoy this. I'll get this video over to you. Thanks for watching, guys. I know the audio wasn't great on my end. We will improve that moving forward, but let me know your feedback. We'll see you in the next video.